This is Real News and Information, 570 KLIF. 717 at KLIF. Remember back in 2014, September 30th, Thomas Duncan mm-hmm. became the first Ebola patient diagnosed in the U.S. Right. He, he was, was from Liberia. Yeah, and he was visiting family here in Dallas and was treated at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital. But he died there of Ebola on October 8th. He was the first Ebola patient diagnosed in the in the United States, as Amy just said. And two healthcare workers who treated him were infected with Ebola, 26-year-old nurse Nina Pham and 29-year-old nurse Amber Vinson, both of whom uh, treated him at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital. Now, they were both cured, right? They were both okay. Yes. But a lawsuit connected to all of this has been uh, going on for the last four years, and it's now headed to the Supreme Court of Texas today. It involves an Ohio bridal company. And the Dallas Hospital, the Presbyterian, uh, Texas Health Presbyterian, and here to talk about this is Dallas-based attorney Quentin Brogdon uh, to kind of explain how this is going to happen today at the Texas Supreme Court. Good morning, Quentin. Good morning, Dave and Amy. How are you today on this rainy morning? Just fine. So who's suing who exactly in this case? Well, Amy, an Ohio bridal shop, Coming Attractions, is suing Texas Health Resources, the company that runs uh, Presbyterian Hospital. And the claim is that the bridal shop had to shut down after this nurse, Amber Vinson, unknowingly contracted Ebola. She went into the bridal shop, tried on something. Later, the Ohio authorities shut down at least temporarily the store to clean it up. But when it reopened, according to the bridal shop, it became known as the Ebola store. It had a stigma, and then eventually it was forced to close for good. And so this was filed in Texas state court, and the hospital argued that a Texas medical malpractice law, Chapter 74 of the Civil Practice and Remedies Code, required an expert report within 120 days which would have been true uh, and would be true if this was a traditional malpractice claim. The da- Dallas trial judge said, no, this is not a so-called health care liability claim, a traditional malpractice claim. The bridal store didn't need to file this expert report, so I do not, as the judge, have to dismiss the case. But then the hospital appealed this to the Dallas Court of Appeals, and they said, no, this is, even though it's somewhat unorthodox, it is under this law that would have normally applied to malpractice cases. You did not file this report, and we are dismissing the case. So now the case has been appealed one more step further to the Texas Supreme Court, and it's being argued each side is going to have 20 minutes. And the issue is whether this malpractice law applies here and whether the bridal shop needed to file an expert report and whether because they didn't, the case now has to be dismissed. I know the hospital ended up settling with the two nurses, and I forget if it went through the court process or not. Um, Why not just settle this with mediation or, or just be done with it? Why do you think the hospital's continuing on with this? Well, there's a long line of cases that favor health care providers in Texas. The law that's being used here potentially to prevent this Ohio bridal shop from having a stay in court usually is applied to patients and usually with devastating results. Uh, as a lawyer who sometimes at least handles malpractice cases, I see this law play out every day. And when I tell clients who call me, I'm sorry, I just can't take your case. This law was dramatically tightened up in 2003 as part of a so-called sweeping set of so-called tort reform changes. There are caps on non-economic damages. And, and, you know, when these cases go to trial, the providers, contrary to what many may believe, the providers, the doctors, the hospitals win, you know, more than 70 percent of the time. So these are some of the most toughest, most expensive cases always for the patients. In this case, we have a bridal shop. It's somewhat unusual. So this law and the interpretation of it is very much stacked in favor of the providers. And it, it, it's a law that consistently keeps people from going forward in lawsuits, unfortunately. Talking with Dallas-based attorney Quentin Brogdon. He is with Crane Lewis Brogdon LLP and uh, former president of the Dallas Trial Lawyers. I'm, I'm interested in this report that you said should have been filed within 120 days. Who was supposed to do that? What was it supposed to include? The 
patient normally, when they're filing a malpractice case, according to the law, and this is a unique requirement, if, if I sue you in a car wreck, I don't have to file this report in 120 days, and the jury gets to decide who was negligent. But in a malpractice case, there are special protections for doctors and hospitals, and according to the specific provisions of the law, if I'm the patient bringing the suit, I have to file a report with the court within 120 days that outlines all the departures from the standard of care and how that caused injury. And if the report is not in that specific format, even if it's filed, my case can be dismissed and I can owe you, if I, if you're the doctor, attorney's fees and costs. And that's what's at issue here. The bridal shop did not file that report. They're how quickly we, do these we, cases we usually involved. resolve? And um, do you think, do you have any idea how the court will rule? Well, medical malpractice cases, in my experience, usually take years to resolve because they're very hard fault, they're very technical, and they're very expensive. And in this case, unfortunately, I'm handicapping this as a case that probably, based on the track record of our Texas Supreme Court, which is very much a friend of the doctors and hospitals in its rulings, probably the bridal shop is going to still have their case dismissed. It's going to stay the way the Court of Appeals left it, namely dismissed, and this bridal shop probably is going to end up owing attorney's fees and costs to the hospital, unfortunately. Hmm. If the bridal shop even still exists, do you happen to know? Well, no, the bridal shop is out of business. This is the shell of it, essentially, and that's part of the claim of the lawsuit, that they were put out of business by the visitation of this nurse with Ebola. Uh, Quentin, I'm, I'm interested in uh, the fact that each side in this case only gets 20 minutes to make its case to the Texas Supreme Court. I assume that's standard procedure, and I know that the U.S. Supreme Court, I think the lawyers that uh, that go there have, I don't know, an hour or something. I guess the idea is you've all been through this for years now. You know the case. Get your act together and present it quickly. That's right, and each of the uh, sides has extensively briefed the arguments and so there are many many written pages Uh, and so essentially the idea is this is just sort of clean up and questions the justices of the court may have for the advocates you know we're confused about this or how do you respond to that and you know many times even in trial courts now judges are cutting unfortunately uh, the oral arguments saying well we've seen the briefing particularly in federal court now we've seen the briefing and and really you know, lawyers arguing that's not going to change our minds. I, I don't agree with that, and most lawyers don't agree with that. But unfortunately, some judges now seem to be of the mindset that arguments won't sway them either way. be interesting to see how this case uh, plays out. Quinton, thanks so much for your expertise this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks, Amy. We'll be watching this one closely. Dallas-based attorney Quinton Brogdon with Crane Lewis and Brogdon.